Hi, I'm Danny, the Millennium Shepherd of Officer Park. Today we're going to be taking a walk around some local green spaces and parks, finding some hedgerow berries and feral plants to bring home and make some incredible drinks. Okay, so let's head out and do a bit of foraging. And when we get back, we're going to use some basic equipment that you'll have in your kitchen and some simple ingredients from your pantry to make some cordials and brew some teas from whatever we can find. We're here at a wetlands in North London. And this time of the year, late summer, we'll be looking for berries, edible plants and wildflowers. So we're going to take a walk around the different parts of the wetlands and see what we can find. Berries can usually be found along hedgerows and on bushes. And edible plants grow in shadowy patches and along paths. Here we have a patch of young nettles that we found in the woodlands. When cutting them, always wear gloves because they have a nasty sting. Young nettles are better than old ones, but make sure you leave a few leaves on the stalk to encourage new growth. Elder bushes produce both elder flowers in early summer and then elder berries in late summer. So when you've picked your elder flowers in early summer and made yourself some lovely elderflower cordial, those flowers that aren't picked and get pollinated turn into elderberries. So you can come back at the end of summer and take some to make some elderberry jam or elderberry cordial. When cutting off elderberries, always use scissors to snip off the bunches and make sure that you leave some behind so the wildlife have a food source. Blackberries can be found in hedgerows, both near water and inland. They're a very hardy plant and grow pretty much anywhere in the UK and most parts of Europe. In late summer, the berries start to ripen and you can tell the ones to pick by their deep purple colour. As well as berries and edible plants, you'll also find an abundance of wildflowers, lots of which are edible, such as this one, the thistle. Now we've got a really good selection of berries, plants and flowers. Let's head back to the kitchen and make some drinks. So we've just been for a walk around our local wetlands. We found some elderberries, some nettles, some wildflowers and some blackberries. From these we're going to make some cordials and we're going to make some nettle tea. And then we're going to use those to make the final drinks. We're going to start off by washing our nettles uh, before we make a cordial and a tea from them. Um, I'm going to put a glove on to stop myself from getting stung. And then we're going to take them and submerge them in some clean water, cold water, uh, and then drain them off. So here we go. So once you've given them a good rinse, drain off the excess. And I can see in the bowl that we've got a few little bits of debris just drain them off into a colander over a bowl and repeat. Okay, so we've got about three handfuls of nettles here. We're going to take one of those handfuls and put them into this heat proof jug. And then we're going to pour over about 500 mils of water, boiled water. Now we're just going to leave that to infuse and brew. I can already smell a lovely nettly aroma coming off it. So we're just going to set that aside to completely cool. Now we're going to make the nettle cordial. We do this by adding 250 grams of cast sugar to a pan and add 250 grams of water. Bring that to the boil to dissolve the sugar. And then we're going to add the remaining nettles into the hot sugar syrup and leave it to cool completely. So now we're going to wash the elderberries. So just take a handful and submerge them in the cold water. Give them a little agitate. Drain them off. Place them in the colander and just repeat until they're all done. Now we need to get the berries off the stems. So just take a little cluster and just gently tease them off with your fingers. And any ones that aren't quite ripe, if you're gentle enough, will stay on the stems. But if they do go, it doesn't really matter that much. 
and just repeat this until you've got all the berries off. So now we've got the elderberries off the stems. Um, we're just going to look in the bowl and remove any big bits of stem that have found its way in there. If there are any kind of little bits of stem in there, which there will be, don't worry too much because they're going to get strained out of the final product and it won't affect the flavour that much. So now we're going to make the elderberry cordial. It's exactly the same process as a nettle cordial. So all you need to do is take 250 mils of water, add it to a pan, along with 250 grams of caster sugar, put that on the heat and bring it to the boil. And then we're going to add the elderberries and then let it cool completely. So while the sugar syrup is on the heat, we're going to follow exactly the same process, but with the blackberries. So now the nettle tea is cooled completely, we're going to strain it off. You can do that using either a fine sieve or a nut milk or jelly bag. So we just pass it through. And then with the back of the spoon, give it a little squidge. Get all that lovely nettleness out. And also, just so you know, they now no longer sting you once they've been cooked. Now the elderberries in the sugar syrup is cooled completely. We're going to strain it off. So again, you can do this with a fine sieve or a jelly bag or nut milk bag. That's a really good idea at this point, just to give them a little squeeze. Just to get, make sure you get a really nice vivid color. But you don't want to push it so hard that you start pushing the pulp through the sieve. And if you're doing this in the nut milk or jelly bag, then you just kind of give it a little twist. There we go. So now we've strained our elderberry syrup, we've got our elderberry cordial. All you've got to do now is follow the same process with the nettles and the blackberries. So now we've strained off all of our cordials, we can bottle them. So let's pour it into a sterilised bottle. Like so. And as long as your bottles are sterilised, we'll keep in the fridge for up to a month. So the first drink we're going to make is going to be our nettle iced tea. So, we need a highball glass and we're going to fill that with ice. And then, we're going to take a shaking tin, add some ice, and add some of your nettle tea. So a good old splash. Give it a good old shake. And then strain it into the serving glass. Then we're going to add 50 mils of the nettle cordial. There. And then we're going to add a lemon twist and just get those essential oils squeezed out over the glass. Add it in. A mint sprig. Give it a slap to release those aromas. And then we're going to finish it with a little fellow steaming plant, which is a thistle. A few straws, and serve. So now we're going to make the blackberry bramble. First of all, fill your glass of ice. Then, add your soda water. Fill your glass about an inch and a half from the top. Then we're going to add 50 mils of apple cider vinegar. And then we'll have 50 mils 
of the black precordial. Give it a gentle stir so we don't knock out too many bubbles. Then it's a couple of blackberries on top of the glass, followed by some wildflowers. A straw and serve. So this one is called an elderberry and beetroot cooler. So fill your glass of ice. Add 50 mils of the elderberry cordial. It's 50 mils of beetroot juice. Top that with soda. And again, just a gentle stir so we don't knock out too many bubbles. And then we're going to add an orange slice. And a sprig of mint. Give it a slap to release the aroma. Add your straw and serve. If you want to turn any of these drinks into cocktails, a measure of gin or vodka would work perfectly in any of these drinks. Well, thanks for coming along and making these foraged feral beverages with me. Um, I really hope you enjoy making the products at home. Um, we've been on a really big journey today. We went out into the wild and picked our own produce. We brought it into the kitchen and we've made our own products, a range of cordials and, and a tea. Um, and then with those, we made our final drinks. So those products that we made are very versatile. You can use them in a million different ways. When you do go foraging, just pick and take what you need. It's a food source to local wildlife in the area. So what we forage today is local to us here in London. If you'd like to find out what's local to you and what would be good at certain times of year, there are plenty of resources online and it'll also give you lots of guidance on how to forage safely.